This presidential election could come down to one key demographic, women. Both sides of the aisle are fighting to sway women voters this election cycle as reproductive rights emerge as one of the top issues hitting the ballot. In recent election cycles, millions more women than men have registered to vote. And in every presidential election since 1964, they've topped men in terms of turnout numbers. It's time to go on the record with Scott Tranter, director of data science from Decision Desk HQ. Scott, let's jump right into it. Trump recently came out against a national abortion ban, saying it should be left to the states. Are we seeing a shift in how the GOP is handling what is really becoming a top issue for voters this election cycle? We absolutely are. It's interesting. You know, I'm always amazed to see Donald Trump does, you know, he does his own live focus groups, right? He looks around and he says, okay, what do I need to say um, to get the biggest applause or the biggest support? And his statement on abortion um, is, is clearly geared to the more moderate wing of the GOP independents and certainly maybe some Democrats who's, who, 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 who may vote for him, you know, basically coming out saying, you know, look to, look to the states. And that's pretty smart given the data we've seen around abortion and elections over the last couple of years. There was a very contentious issue in Kansas and Ohio um, around abortion and Democrats came out and independents came out and overwhelmingly struck some of those things down. We're going to see abortion or abortion related issues on the ballot in states like Florida and a few others this year. Um, and it's clearly a motivating factor for Democrats on the money side. That's pretty clear cut. And there's there's plenty of evidence to show it, it really motivates um, not only Democratic voters, but independent and some moderate Republican voters um, uh, on the issue. So it's a vote driver. Uh, it's a money driver. And we even see Donald Trump moderating his position because he looked at he looked across what the, 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 the majority of public opinion is on it and said, you know, my party need my, my party basically needs to moderate on this and I can't be so strong on the message. Right, right. And one of those groups you mentioned, suburban women voters, have been one of the most critical demographics of Trump since at least 2018, when the group really helped Democrats push back against the former president and Republicans during those midterm elections. Are we seeing Trump and the GOP struggle to win over suburban women voters this cycle, um, you know, after they've become so consequential, really, to the past few elections? We absolutely have suburban women voters, even we're going to we're seeing some signs of suburban men in terms of, you know, uh, tax issues, some of the more war in Ukraine, um, war in Israel issues, those types of things. Suburban suburban voters are the ba are, are the battleground for both parties this year. And it's a segment of the population Republicans have historically done very well with well with. But, you know, all the talk is around. Is there a political realignment for the parties, um, you know, because. 10, 15 years ago, Mitt Romney would solidly win the suburbs um, and the Republicans are, are having to fight for that demographic now. Um, you know, and you're, you're seeing that and how some of the issues are playing out. That's for sure. Looking back to 2020, seven in 10 Latina women said they voted for President Biden. How are Democrats fighting this election cycle to keep that vote as we've seen Hispanics and Latinos and Latinas really start to become more of a swing constituency? Well, we see it, you know, the Trump camp, or I'm sorry, the Biden campaign has come out and, and specifically stated this is a priority for them. Um, again, the polling shows that there's some softening of support uh, among the Hispanic um, vote for Democrats. And while it's expected the Democrats are going to win that demographic, they need to win it by 7, 80 percent. You know, they need to win it with 70, 80 percent of the vote. Um, if a Republican like Donald Trump were able to get 30 or 35 percent of the Hispanic vote, which Republicans haven't seen since George W. Bush, um, ran for president, that would be a huge, huge win for the Republicans and could change the race um, in his favor in states like Nevada and Arizona. Democrats have really started to ditch the term Bidenomics. Looking at recent polling number, we see that black women uh, say the cost of living and inflation are among their top issues. We know that black women played a consequential role in flipping Georgia in 2020. Um, can Democrats flip that state if they don't streamline their message on the economy? Yeah, no, it's it's certainly a risk. And it's funny, you know, the reason why, at least from a polling perspective, why they dropped it is, while you can put every economic metric and jobs and consumer reports and all these these books about it out and say, hey, look at the data. The data says that, you know, the economy is good. At the end of the day, we did have record inflation the past couple of years. And that's really how people view the economy is how much does it cost for eggs? How much does it cost for gas? 
Can I afford to go on that vacation? Those types of things. Um, do I got to work two jobs? Those, those types of things. They don't look at, you know, man, unemployment's down 0.2 percentage points or, you know, inflation only went up two and a half percent, you know, to them, that's great. It only went two and a half percent, but it's still, you know, $15 to eat at McDonald's when it used to be seven. And I think that that's the issue that's hitting all Americans. And, and you know, you cite your staff from African-American women, um, you know, a lot of these women in some of these states, they're the ones who do the grocery shopping or they're the ones who see the front lines of this stuff right. um, when they're when they're buying the food. Trump's nationwide lead has been narrowing by the week. It's now just 0.8 percent above Biden. Do you think we could see Biden top, top Trump soon? Yeah, no, look, the averages are certainly trending that way. Um, and I think we're going to see a big seesaw over the summer, right? So Joe Biden has just started spending tens of millions of dollars in some of these swing states. He's he's on pace to have a billion dollars and will certainly ramp up his spending later this summer. The the Donald Trump, the RNC has money, but not nearly as much. And so, you know, like we always see in politics, money moves votes and, you know, Joe Biden spending it. So I expect, it, you know, Joe Biden to overtake him. But I also wouldn't be surprised to see it seesaw back to Trump later in the summer as the campaign heats up. This is going to be a close race right down to the wire. Yeah, we'll certainly see a polling roller coaster. Biden just got some good news out of Michigan. A new poll shows he's now up three percent over Trump. What other states should we be watching? Uh, you know, the 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 hot one this week that's that kind of made some notes. And I know you and I talked about in the past is Nevada. Um, and it linked it to the, the Hispanic vote we talked about. Republicans are making some inroads there. Um, the Democrats have an incumbent senator whose polling is soft, expected to win. Um, but, you know, the, the Republicans are going to field a good candidate. And that's a, that's a state with a lot of union workers that it has historically been for the Democrats, but not not for sure anymore. Um, you know, that's that's the kind of one of the other hot states to look at. and will be very consequential for both control of the Senate as well as, you know, the presidential race this fall. Uh, finally, how is Decision Desk tracking RFK Jr.'s performance in his three way race with Trump and Biden? Do you think we're seeing a significant drop in RFK's polling numbers? Yeah, it, 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 we are. It's certainly measurable in the average. Um, and a lot of it is, is look, the Democrats had come out and said the Biden campaign actually started a team, hired some people specifically um, there to to campaign and combat against RFK's rising popularity. The Republicans have yet to do so. But, you know, they're going to they're, they're they're also going to be worried about it going into the fall just because he's taken it away. I expect RFK's numbers to dip down a little bit, but. All he needs is two or three or four or five percent in a state like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, where it looks like he he's got a good chance to get on the ballot. He's not there yet, but he's certainly shown some organization prowess where he doesn't he, he could still lose some of his support and still play a, a major factor in the race this fall. Well, Scott Tranter, as always, thank you for helping us break it down. We'll see you next week. Thanks for having me. Thanks. And that's it for What's America Thinking. Come back next week. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Hill's YouTube channel. And we want to hear from you. Leave your comments and let us know what's on your mind.